What a piece of junk. This is the Shattered Order Podcast. Go switch off. If you're looking for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes news, information, and theory crafting, you found the podcast you're looking for. With your hosts, Good Night Punk and Wind Killer Inc. We would be honored if you would join us. There's some event going on this weekend, Sunday night or something. Uh, what the hell's all that about? I I don't know. I might have taken it off of work, though. Hmm. I can't blame you. That is understandable. Probably, uh, probably a good thing to take off for. The good old wonderful Super Bowl. Who An would American have thought holiday. that the Patriots are back? Wow, just yeah. shocking. <laughs> All right, so I put this at the beginning of the notes because I was just really curious who you thought were was going to win. Well, I mean, the I, I think the Rams by far have the more, more talented roster, more explosive offense, they have really good defense, um, and basically all the Patriots have is Brady and Belichick, so... Naturally, I'm going to go with the Patriots. What about you? <laughs> I was hoping that's what you say. Oh, that's who I'm picking too. Unless the uh, I mean, unless somehow Aaron Donald can get to Tom Brady, then then they might have trouble. If they can't get to Tom Brady, then I don't think they're going to do very well. I mean, I'm rooting for the Rams. See, much like I can't root for NFC North teams. In the super or in the uh, playoffs, I can't root for NFC uh, North or NFC East. I got gotcha. you. West. I went through all. That's of them there. fair. So screw the Rams, Cardinals, Nemesis, Nemesai. I can't root for them. Yeah. So, and it's funny because I really am not a big Patriots fan, but the more interviews I see with Tom Brady, the more I like him. So, I like him. I just don't really like the Patriots. Well, I mean, I like him. I like Gronk. I actually like Belichick. Oh, I'm fine with the Patriots. Um, I'm not a fan, but I, I think I think greatness of is parody. amazing. I'm and... a fan of parody, and we don't get that with the Patriots, which is why I don't like them. I guess it's just me being salty that they're so good. But whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't particularly care. I, 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 I enjoy watching greatness, and that is what the Patriots are. I'm just, I really like Sean McVay, and uh, I like kind of like what the Rams are doing. So. Uh, it'd be nice to see someone different win it, but gotcha. We'll see. Um, all right, so we are looking for a new recruit. That is the Shattered Order Guild. Anyone out there looking for a guild? Uh, we so are looking a... for. No, I'll say put it out there. If you're three and a half million GP and you're looking for a guild that's doing well in territory wars and searching for those last two stars in territory battles, maybe you'll be the one to push us over the edge. So if you are interested in joining the podcast, the guild that the podcast was named after, give me a sh or wink a shout on uh, Discord anytime this week and hopefully we can get you in. Now... Awesome. Another thing I wanted to mention is that we've talked about certain things on the show. We've already put out one shirt. 
I just want to say that as far as merch goes, we're going to have some announcements for everyone next week. So if you're tuning in next week, there will be new merch information for all of you out there. So how's that? Indeed. Yeah. Uh, make sure you pay attention next week. And of course, if you don't already have a Shattered Order shirt, you can go to shatteredorder.com. And on our homepage, there is the link to um, our bonfire deal that is uh, our, our current t-shirt, which is just amazing. You should definitely order one if you don't have one already. But yeah, we'll be uh, having some new stuff to talk about next week. You won't want to miss it. All righty. Well, we'd also like to thank our good old friends over at Blue Designs. Uh, if, if you guys need a microphone or a really amazing mic stand or anything at all regarding audio, they're your guys. Headphones, whatever. Uh, make sure you head over to bluedesigns.com, promo code SOPOD, and you can get 20% off. Uh, I mean... It's a hell of a deal. Right, Dan? Yes. <laughs> For a second oh, there, just... I was lost. Yes, Blue is great. I love all their stuff. I Every time I think about going out of town, I think about that sweet Yeti Nano that I got. That thing worked mm -hmm. perfectly when I was in uh, San Francisco. They just got some really awesome stuff. And these headphones are perfect for traveling. I, every, my uh, cruise... I used them almost every day. It was awesome. So, yep. cannot recommend them enough. So go check them out. Awesome. Well, uh, let's go ahead and jump into this first topic. All right. Hey, guys. What did you do in Sloga this week? Um, that that's pretty much it nothing uh this was not a very exciting week in swoga for me um i'm 6 out of 85 on imbo 3785 on range trooper 40 out of 65 on bastlish on falling um i'm farving uh candrus also uh, i can't remember what i am on him i should have checked um and i've been farming mod salvage that's pretty much it. Like, I've been, yeah. Are you not farming Candor's Ordo? Yeah, I am. Okay, because I was going to kind of say, speak? Uh? I was, but it's not listed in the notes. So I didn't know if I actually heard you say Candor's Ordo. Yeah, I, I don't remember what I'm at. I didn't look at him, so, yeah. I was just kind of wondering and saying we should update that because I feel as though that will be important in the coming month. So yeah, I was just curious where you were at. Yeah, I'm. I can't remember. Are you at five stars, six stars? And I have no idea. Oh well, you must not be anywhere near where I am then, because I know exactly where I am. So I'll I'll update my farms real quick, just since uh, I think that would be interesting Th considering thirty two out of eighty five. All right, there you go. So as far as Old Republic go, which are the ones I think most people are interested in, my Candorous Ordo is 78 out of 100. So he should be done here in a few days. And then hopefully another one of the two that are going to come out will go to Cantina and will be ready to go right after them. And then also I have the world's worst Bastila Sean Fallen Drops. Except for today. I got six out of eight today on my first set wow. of Sims. So that was nice. But nice. literally every day this week, total wise, for eight Sims, for every eight Sims was one. And then I think I had two twos. So Dang. the past week I've been doing two, one refresh. So 16 nodes. Two or three every day except for today. And I haven't done the second set of eight today to see if I get zero after the six. But... Worst drops ever on this node for me. I haven't even, not, I haven't get, I've got 57 shards total since she dropped. I'm at 57 out of 65. So that one is concerning and obnoxious. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Candor, you're further along than I am, but. No. Oh, man. Well, 
Other than that, Imbo, I am still... This dude, I got him to six stars, and it seems like all his shards dropped off. I'm only at 69 out of 100, so I still got a little ways to go with him. And then Django's 67 out of 85, so he's slow going too. I swear to God, ever since I seven-starred Houndstooth, every shard is a Houndstooth shard and no Django's. <laughs> It's uh, so does that annoying. surprise you? It does not. It's yeah, it just, shouldn't. it's probably biased, but man, it just seems like all I get is houndstooth shards. I'm like, yep. come on. So, oh, well, what can you do? Um, Let's see, what else do we got here? Ah, thanks for everyone that came and hung out with me last night. I did a surprise stream of the unlocking of Revan on my alt account. So I did the whole event on there. Geared him up as far as I could, which was gear eight, almost gear nine, missing one piece. Freaking uh, stun gun, of course. Didn't have a stun gun uh. for him. Three Zetas on him. It was fun just to go through that event and show it off. And you know that they put in the patch notes about the event coming back that they had added a few more things to help you understand what was going on. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, so those were in there. Whenever you started a tier, the little dude that has the, all the dusty texts would pop up and he'd say something. So if you did it the first time around and you're interested in the event and the new stuff that was added, the uh, VOD of my stream last night is on our Twitch page. So you can go back and you can watch it and see all the new stuff they added to the event if you're interested in that. But I did stream last night and I wanted to say thanks to everyone that came and hung out. Now, important other business. If you've heard back in the day, so since we've had this podcast, we started two starter guilds for our alliance. Now, the first one we started, the Future of the Order, awesome guild, great guys, are attempting heroic for the second time starting tomorrow. And I Ooh. am now part of the Future of the Order on my alt. So, uh... Nice. That is something that happened this week, so hopefully I can get in there and do some big damage and help out so that we can all get through it. And, uh, yeah, it'll be awesome. But I wanted to say thanks to the Toshe, Toshe, Tosh Station Nerf Herders, who I was in their guild for a long time now. Um, Drew Nuts and all those guys over there. appreciate you having me when I was there, but I wanted to say this as well. If you're looking for a really good guild and you don't want to join the Shattered Order, Toshi Station Nerf Herders are pretty awesome. So go go talk to Drew in our podcast chat because they have a spot open now. And they would also love to have you. Nice. But what else did I do? What is? Oh, I won my uh, – you didn't mention this. I won my last Grand Arena match. How was yours? Ah, uh, I suspect this will be a topic for later. Oh, okay. Well, I can't wait to hear what happened. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I am I worried, though, about this new Revan invasion because contrary to popular belief and what seems possible, in all my Grand Arenas so far, I have not fought a single person with a Revan. Really? Not one Revan. Either they saved them for offense or they didn't have them. Dang. That's crazy. So uh, I'm not looking forward to this Revan invasion because I'm kind of curious what it's going to do to my strategy and how my uh, I have Revan. So obviously I had a uh, I had a one up on there. Yeah, but I'm not going to have that as a thing anymore. So I'm kind of curious to see how I do now without that Revan crutch. So that'll be yeah. interesting. Cool. Last thing, uh, last thing, but not least. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, I, most of the people I've fought lately have had Revan. Surprisingly, uh, I didn't face very many in the beginning, but here lately, seems like there's been a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, Urza mentioned something that we'll talk about a little bit later in more depth, but he's worried about ship GP being removed. Could be a tough. Could be tough times. That is. We'll talk about that a little bit later and what that is, but I agree with you, man. It's I'm I'm wondering how that's gonna affect the your matchmaking. So, yeah. Last thing, did you say to any characters this week? I did not. No. 
Uh, well, I did. I zeta Paplu. I got another golden bear with a Zeta. I just thought that one was... I have a ton of Zeta mats right now. I hardly ever Zeta anything, and I just figured Paplu's would really help my Ewok team out a lot because uh, if you don't know, his Zeta is... Whenever Paplu gains a status effect, he recovers 5% protection. And there's a lot of status effects going on with Ewoks. Yeah, lots of status effects on Ewoks. So I figured that was another good one. And I in 3v3 Grand Arena, I run Chirpa, Wicket, Paplu... Uh, defense team and that's been tearing yep. it up for me so throw that zeta on there and, and i'm gonna see if it makes it even better so yeah excited about that. nice very cool uh that it anything else um that's it for this week all right if i was a sort of character how would you mod me so, with everybody getting Revan, figured we would have to talk a little bit about Revan this week as far as modding. It seemed logical. Of course, if you go to youtube.com slash shattered order pod, you will uh, find my video on modding Grandmaster Yoda, specifically under Revan. And, of course, uh, how to use the Revan team in Phase 2 of the Heroic Sith Raid. So, go check out those videos if you haven't already. But um, I, I cover them for raid in there pretty well. I mean, for the most part, in the raid, you're going to want crit damage on everybody. Um, no, Well, not everybody. Speed on just about everybody. Crit damage on Grandmaster Yoda. Arena, you're going to want to go more uh, like an offense set because there's crit immunity and things like that. What... Uh, what team do you run exactly with Revan in Arena? This is, you know, it's funny. While you were talking, I was thinking about, I talked about this last night on the stream, and I kind of wanted to talk about it tonight. So um, I'll mention some things about teams here when you're done talking modding. So just ask me afterward. But my team I run is Revan, uh, Bastila, Yoda, Grandmaster Yoda, General Kenobi, and uh, Jolie. Okay, so just kind of a quick rundown over that team. I use something similar, except uh, instead of Bessler Sean, I am using Chewy because he just makes things, he makes Kill and Jolie way easier. Uh, you run so, him on offense, and you keep, do you keep him on defense? Mm-hmm, yeah. Oh, man, I would target the crap out of you. <laughs> I, I do find I drop about the same money the way it don't particularly matter much mm. um, so as far as Grandmaster Yoda speed don't matter you know this I've talked about that uh. Revan is almost entirely based on speed it's very important for him as far as the other primaries on him you know him kind of being around is pretty important. I totally see the argument for protection or health. I don't really think it matters a whole lot, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I think I probably lean protection, but uh, I think I use a crit damage triangle because it has the most secondary speed that I've got. So I feel like, you know, secondary speed should be priority on him and then make do with the other primaries. Uh, Joe Lee should entirely be about health. Like he's one of those characters that if you have sliced health primaries, you know, six, uh, six dot health primaries, you absolutely want them on Joe Lee because of his health recovery and the fact that his tenacity gives him some immunity. If you want to throw a tenacity set on there to give him, give him a little bit more tenacity and crit avoidance because of his unique not a terrible idea at all. Um, let's see. Uh, for how, how do you have your general Ken general Kenobi modded? Uh, I mostly protection, I believe. Uh, I think I have all uh, health mods on him. I went okay. for as much health, and I went to make him as tanky as possible without worrying as much about speed but putting speed on where i could where it made sense yep. with the mods that i had so 
basically yep. he's um I take that back. That's, I have I have a tenacity set and two health sets. Okay. And he's sitting at 85,000 protection, almost 86,000 protection and 38,000 health. Um so speed 177. Uh Zane asked about speed on Jolie. Jolie, I mean everybody in your arena team can use speed. I'm kind of focusing on the things that are, I guess, outside of that box. Um, I think health, though, I, I will absolutely sacrifice speed for health on Jolie because I think it's that important. On Kenobi, I'm running a crit avoidance arrow just because I want his survivability. He's, again, not a character I particularly care about um, going that often. So I kind of have mine loaded up with you know, protection, defense, health, and, of course, crit avoidance. So, uh, back on the Jolie topic, just one thing to consider with speed on him. One thing that, that of, often happens to me, if you don't have... If you focus nothing on speed on him, there's a good chance, if he's direct focused, that he can be knocked out before direct focus even not, falls off. Depending on how your health and protection is but if you if they're going that many times before he can get a second turn to take that uh that focus off of himself um he's gonna die so there there is some there is some uh priority to speed on him just to make sure that he gets that to drop off because if he doesn't then he's gonna go down like what i do which kind of negates the idea of speed that i'm talking about here is if he gets focused I will do the AOE heal from Revan and swap turn meter with Joe Lee to make him move faster to get that direct focus yep. off him. Because pretty much if he Not goes down, idea. if he goes down and they still have theirs up, it's game over. So you got to do everything you can to make sure he's, he's gone. So, well, or he's here, good. Here's the, if you have enough health on him though, uh, I mean, he's so whenever he gets marked, he doesn't lose turn meter because he can't have turn meter removed, which is very beneficial. It makes speed a little bit less important. And if he dies at first, you know, the first the savior ability from Jedi Knight Revan automatically makes him come back. So he will then gain a hundred percent turn meter and that kind of boosts his turn meter to getting rid of marked. So once he's dead then you're kind of you've just you've lost your savior ability and that's that um and that's why i don't particularly worry about that too i mean my jolie is pretty fast i mean it's not like i don't care about speed on him i do have speed on him but uh like like i said i think that health is way way more important because of the way he recovers on his basic especially you know considering that there are counters and you know so he can counter attack and you can call him into assist and things like that he he can recover his health and protection back super quick well that's a good point one thing to mention as well um sometimes you don't use general kenobi's um dispel or cleanse if he does get direct focused oh no this won't count for that well if he doesn't have focus up and he's still weak and about to die even after it drops off, if he's it's going to kill him, make sure you put that retribution on him because every time he uh, counters, if they're trying to kill him off quickly, then he will uh, heal himself. Yeah. Like a lot. Yep. And he takes a lot to get down. So if he's healing himself every time someone attacks him, it's going to take a Yoda second special to even maybe kill him. So as long as you can find ways to keep him alive, you're good. But the I would say getting mine has ninety seven speed on him, so I think he's two oh eight. I just looked. And that that's plenty fast for me, so that works out pretty well. But I would say if you're just doing base speed, that's not gonna work out very well. Yeah, that that that's probably fair. Uh yeah, so oh crap. Uh, had a comment about that. I don't remember what it was. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, 
So, oh, the other thing about using Chewbacca with Grandmaster Yoda is it makes Grandmaster Yoda actually able to crit on Joe Lee without too much effort because of that extra crit chance. It really helps you get through his crit avoidance. Oh, so he's I just hate Joe Lee so much. He's don't even think don't even think about stunning him. Like that ain't happening. The best yeah. you can do the one of the best things to combat an enemy Joe Lee I found is trying to call Bastila as an assist to get just to get that uh, the uh, ability block on him to try to keep him from bringing everyone back while you're killing him because if yeah. you can get the ability block to land on him he's not going to revive everyone and then you'll be okay you got enough time to continue to try to whittle him down but if you do not do something to him he's just going to call everyone back it's so annoying yep harm's that true uh and then uh, let's see. I don't. I know. I know. Don't say it. Um, Basil Sean, she's basically all about speed and protection. Protection's good. She has really high protection, actually. Uh, so that is a pretty good way to go as well. Um, you have any other thoughts? Like just on say Revan and Arena in general? Um well I can speak from the experience of last night trying to mod mine on some of my better mods. I went between speed and my best mods on him. Like a speed set versus my best speed secondary mods. And uh if you have a bunch in the twenties that don't match up speed sets or any sets at all, I would still do that at first until you got some good speed sets because unless all those speed sets have 20 on them, I found that the ones that I used that were more in the mid-teens for secondary speed, but it were speed, uh, speed primaries, or not primaries, speed set, still was like 10 behind my best mods. So if you're thinking, okay, yeah. well, I'll just put my best speed mods on this dude, and that'll that'll be the fastest I can get him. Try your best speed secondary mods, even if they don't me mesh well at first. Well, until you get the mm -hmm. better speed mods, because I was able to eke out more speed doing that than I was using a speed set. So, speed set is what you want to do if you have good speed secondaries. But for him, you want him as fast as possible. So if it takes mismatching speed sets. To get the fastest stuff you can on him, then that's okay too. So here's here's how you get the fastest character that you can. You go to filter, you filter by yeah. speed set bonus, and then you go sort them by speed. You put your six best speed mods on Revan, and then you unfilter from the speed set bonus filter to where you're looking at all mods and leave them sorted by speed and then you know go and kind of your top couple of ones you can generally put on there and get a pretty good idea and uh see what your speed is and then kind of after that point you can see if you have, have enough other mods with good secondary speed to compensate for the uh missing speed you know if you break that set bonus um that's kind of generally what I do when I'm trying to maximize that. Um, Makes sense. So, should I talk about the comps real quick? Sure. All right, so I wanted to mention, I, in my arena, what I've found is that anything diverting from the, the team I run, I can run through. Or, I'll say it this way, if the team doesn't have General Kenobi on it, it's easy on offense the only ones that i lose to have good speed mods and general kenobi in the team I say the teams that are like revan jolie bastila grandmaster yoda and hermit yoda easy because there's nothing blocking me from killing yoda twice and then going after jolie um they'll bring back yoda yoda will have crit avoidance and you know three quarters of his health one good shot from yoda and he's dead again and now you're going back on in on jolie um 
I don't like that one. I don't like using Ezra instead of uh, and I don't like using Ezra instead of General Kenobi. Anything without Joe Lee in it is pretty much easy at the top. I just think that if you're going to switch out anyone in the team, it has to be Bastila. Like that is the only spot that you can really flip in and out a character you want to try because the team has to have Grandmaster Yoda, has to have Revan, has to have General Kenobi, and it has to have Jolie in my opinion. And I think that Bastila Sean character can flip in and out if you want to try things. But as far as hard to beat on defense, if it doesn't have Grandmaster, or not Grandmaster, but uh, General Kenobi in it, I find it really easy to beat. So, Yeah, and the big thing there is the crit avoidance that everyone gets because it really just kind of ki oh, yeah. kills your ability to put out damage. Yeah, but Yoda goes so fast too, right? So my strategy, and I've heard a lot of people use the strategy of direct focusing Revan first. I always go straight at Yoda. So um, mm -hmm. taking out Yoda twice before direct focus ends usually doesn't happen. But usually he's to the point where he's almost dead after direct focus drops off. And I could kill him. And then I have to go through Kenobi right so usually in any other team without kenobi i take out yoda twice and then go straight after joe lee but if you have to go from yoda to kenobi instantly yoda's going to be coming back and then on top of that you're still going to be fighting kenobi while yoda heals himself back up and doesn't make himself an easy target even though he came back with three quarters health you know so yep. you got to be if you want the best team and you have the characters, I would say make sure you put Joe Lee in there, General Kenobi, Revan, and Grandmaster Yoda, and then play with that last spot. Basil Sean, Chewbacca, um, Ezra. If you want to try double tank with Obi-Wan, you get more than enough offense out of Revan and Yoda. I mean, there's just a lot of things to try, but I think there's only really one spot to switch out, so... I totally agree. Um, so with me using Chewbacca, I have a little bit different kill order. Um, so Revan always starts out with the special buff that calls in a Jedi. So because he always has it, I will target General Kenobi. I will call in Grandmaster Yoda with that assist ability. And then I will do Grandmaster Yoda's uh, AOE because he gains 100% turn meter so that will call in Chewbacca then I will use his special which also calls in Chewbacca and that kills uh, that that will kill off General Kenobi 8 out of 10 times and then you know on Revan's next turn I target Jolie and hit auto and it's a wrap <laughs> I should also mention that even at 305 speed, I have one of the slower Revens at the top of my arena. So I'm always playing from yeah. behind. So my strategy is usually how to win when you're not the first person going. So there's also that. Yep. 100%. I agree. Um, all right. Well, I think that pretty much covers that. Sounds good to me. What do we got next? Since everyone loves a good poll, let's dance through the results and see what you thought this week. Time to talk about the poll. Yeah, let's let's talk about our poll. All right. Well, I want to say first say this. Uh, after last week's episode, Frost Virus, one of our Patreons, came up and asked me, he said, you know, if you want some help making the poll, and I was like, you know what? That sounds awesome. So Frost Virus has been help, helped us out this week, put together the poll, asking us, you know, what kind of stuff we want on there and what to do. And he had this thing done and ready to go to be sent out today, two days ago. Two days, two days early. It was awesome. Hey. But the only problem was then the road ahead came out and some of the questions answers were already answered. So what can you do? We put it out there anyway. Everyone guessed great about what it 
certain things meant. That's fine. But uh, I would like to point out that also Frost Virus poll had the most responses of any poll we've ever done. Wow. 283 responses. That's a lot of responses. That's a lot of people uh, coming to check out our poll. So. Heck yeah. <laughs> so the first question on there is, are you ready for the return of Jedi Knight Revan? If you don't know, he came back on at the stroke of midnight. And I don't know the date. Wednesday. I'm looking it up here. Everyone's seeing my yeah. calendar on your uh, over your face here. I thought it was thir- I thought it came back yesterday. Thursday. So Thursday, the thirty first. Okay. Yeah. The thirty first is when it came back, right at midnight. And uh, so if it, if you were ready, like um forty five per six thirty five point six percent of people were ready. You already have your uh Revan and you're ready to go. So, or you might not be, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but the highest percentage of people were 45.6% saying, I am already done. Revan will lead my Jedi shortly. The second, second largest chunk of those people said that I am one of the fortunate who unlocked Jedi Knight Ray the first time he was available. That is where me and Wink fit in there at the 32% mark and then you go down to the last three sections which are all very close very close so one's 8.8% which is not even on my farming schedule currently followed by 7% for both I will not get him this time but he is on my list to get in the next few months or I may be done in time if the RNG gods are with me so the majority of people we're ready for the event or already unlocked him. Let's say 78% of people. And then the rest of them are either not farming for him yet or working to make sure they get him the next time or this by the end of this one. So pretty sweet. Uh, for those of you who are ready for Revan, how ready are you? This one was kind of a question about do you have gear ready? Do you have Zetas ready? And, uh, man, a lot of people must do the whole write out what gear I have, what gear I need for this character, and be completely ready once he drops. Even not knowing when the event was coming back, people must have been doing this because... (coughs) Ah, Excuse me. The top one for both questions was Gear 12, 3 Zetas. So every, for the most part... For gear saved, at least 132 people said that they were ready with the gear out of 283 people. And then for Zetas, 154 people said that they were ready with all three Zetas. Now, the Zetas one's curve, bell curve is a little different than the gear one. Um, as far as gear goes, there were you were either ready for gear 12 or the next highest was gear 9 then gear 10, then gear 11, and then you had that massive bump for gear 12. So you were either ready for them or you weren't because I gear 9, without worrying about gear at all, I was able to almost get to gear 9 on my Revan. So that's probably the point where most people had to stop if they weren't planning gear. But kind of surprising to see that many people ready for gear 12. Does Swigga show your current gear on hand? No, they don't show you an inventory of your gear, unfortunately. That would be awesome. If if they had a way to do that to where you could pick a character when the kit's revealed and apply what you have in your inventory to that character to see where your gear would take you, that would be amazing, and then tell you what to farm. That would probably be the best feature that I've ever seen. But currently, that's not... Showing your gear inventory on there, it doesn't do that. But that would be pretty sweet. Unless I misunderstood your question and made up my own thing, which would still be awesome if it happened. (laughs) As far as the Zetas go, the lowest ones for Zetas saved was zero for 25 people. Second lowest was one Zeta for 32 people. Third lowest was... Zeta saved, not ready, so 31 people. 
So zero had more than uh, people than one. And then the fourth lowest was two Zetas for 41 people. And then your 154 for people that had three Zetas ready. So pretty, pretty crazy. Sounds like people are mostly pretty prepared for Revan. Oh, yeah. Like I was saying, it's, it's gear nine is pretty much where you can get, even if you're not saving gear. That's how I felt about it. Besides a stun yeah. gun. <laughs> yeah. So, whatever. All right. I'm going to let you do the next question. Mm-hmm. Uh, as part of last week's wager, Wink has to Zeta two characters of Tesh's choosing. And one of wait, them wait, is why? being put up to popular vote. Who do you want to see him Zeta? I think the people need to know because you haven't told them yet. Why do you have to do Zeta two people? Well, so I so I didn't touch on this at the beginning of the podcast either. Like I should have. My bad. Um, the podcast this week got put out kind of like kind of late. It's been a very hectic week. I apologize. Um, had some issues with the audio quality. I have no idea what happened. Uh, something whenever I uploaded it. Um, I got no idea. So, um, that should be fixed in the future. Sorry about that for those of you who did listen to last week's podcast. And if you did, you know what I'm talking about. However, if not, you know that Tesh and I made a wager on the Grand Arena and Tesh won in the Grand Arena. So I now have to Zeta two characters. Like... I don't remember the conversation that well from last week. Like, I don't know how it wound up with you having to do two and him only one. Uh, well, I was just trying to be fair. Like, I, I felt <laughs> like that was, I, I would say the odds on winning based on roster, which I think. No, yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I just right ended now, up I'm not being how, smart on my part. Yeah, I was saying, yeah. I was saying, at least right now I'm thinking that kind of probably wishing you weren't so fair. <laughs> yeah um and i think tesh like did a breakdown base you know talking about what his strategy was based on what i had like it's pretty lengthy breakdown that's on our discord channel um i did not do anything like that uh because honestly i was not paying that much attention to what i was doing um i was basically doing battles while i was at work uh so not a great strategy for Grand Arena. Um, <laughs> so anyway, a, back- well, well, are we looking for a rematch? That's what I want to know. I would have no issue with a rematch. I think you need one, to be honest. So I- I'll tell you what's <laughs> funny. Um, in this last Grand Arena, there was only one round in which I like actually sat down and kind of game planned what I was going to do and did the way I generally do Grand Arena. That was the live stream uh, against D Popeye. And his his roster and my roster were pretty similar. He had more gear 12, gear 11 characters. The mods, I had slight advantage, but he had the closest roster mm-hmm. uh, to me of anyone that I faced in the Grand Arena. And um, that was far and away the best that I have done in 3v3 was that battle on that live stream. Round one of this last Grand Arena, I absolutely should have lost. (laughs) I would say, I thought Um, you had said you had lost, and I was like, oh, well, that sucks. uh, Well, I was pretty certain that I had. I mean, I cleared one territory, and uh, I was like, well, I'm screwed. The other guy never attacked. Literally, had he attacked, he would have been able to clear more than that. Um based on what I saw of his defenses. So I, I I have no idea why he didn't, but, you know, that's fine with me. It was what, whatever. And then, uh, uh, and then of course, Tesh. And, it, you know, it's just kind of funny. The, uh, the, the two that I almost lost, there was a far bigger discrepancy between my roster and the person I was going against than the one that, uh, you know, was I wouldn't say was that decided 
slightly, but you know, it wasn't as close as the others. Um, or at least it wasn't one that I should have lost without question or anything like that. But, uh, so yeah, congratulations to Tash. Well done. Good game plan. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I think that's something that's not talked about enough is game plan and using proper counter teams. I mean, that's the most important thing in grand arena is having those teams and using them in the correct spot. Um, that is, that's that's pretty much the most important thing. More important than uh, mods, roster, or anything else, because anyone near your galactic power should be relatively close. You know. My number one priority right now is finding a Revan counter team that's not my Revan team. <laughs> yeah, because... I always save Revan for uh, arena, or sorry, for offense. But I might have to do that from now on. But we'll see. Yeah. So why don't you break down this amazing poll question? Because one of your Zetas, one of your Zetas has been decided by the community. All right. So uh, let's see. The options were Candorous, Pow, Rose, Night Sister Initiate, and Veteran Chewy. Um, in third place was Veteran Chewy with 12.7%. In second place was Candrus with 17.7%. And the runaway winner is ironically probably the best one. I think I think you got away with something here because that we've talked all the time about possibly underrated Zetas and one of my top ones was Rose. So I think yes, you're doing all right here. Yeah, so uh, I will be adding Rose to my resistance team, and that's actually kind of okay because uh, I've been needing another resistance character for Grand Arena based on the way I set my teams up. So this will actually be kind of nice. I can add another Zeta to that team. So this is kind of beneficial because there is no way on God's Green Earth I would do that Zeta anyway. So, uh, yeah. Um, I will be doing, you know, maybe I'll do that next week on the show or something we'll find Sounds a way good. to uh, uh, we can do the discord uh video share man that'll work okay all right yeah we'll figure it out we will figure it out all right um and and uh no i i did not say i love Rose is saying that was good night punk just just to be clear i would never say such a thing but it is at least better than the other four um all right so uh next question we now know that the login character for february is l337 what do you think this tells us this wasn't even close but it's because we already know the answer <laughs> That's true. That's, That's true. why everyone picked it. So there you go. That's true. So this was actually made before the 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 road head or sorry the road ahead <laughs> actually came out, and uh, yeah. So um, we'll we'll kind of move on from that one because we'll be discussing that more here shortly. Question: uh, Did you have the thing for the road ahead ready to go? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, okay. Never mind. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Next question. Do you listen? This is a question I thought would be interesting to ask because a lot of the time we get people that have said they do the poll because it's posted in their guild. It's a fun thing to do every week, but they don't actually listen to our show. So I wondered what the percentage of people that take this poll are that don't listen to the show or watch the stream so the question was, do you listen to the Shattered Order podcast? 62% of people said yes. 4% said no. So 11 of 283 said no. And then you get to the one where I'm kind of curious. Podcasts are those things millennials talk <laughs> about, right? And that was 35%. And to me, that could be either a no or a yes. So I don't know. How much of that percentage do we swing to the one side or the other? But this is a good question. Um, that is a really good question. If 
but we do know that most people that do the poll are listeners, so that is good to know, which shouldn't be surprising since we since this whole thing spreads from our Discord channel. <laughs> um all right, so next question. How decade Star Wars Galaxy heroes do you consider yourself? Uh the so the possible options were I'm thinking about starting my second alt. I hit my guild's quota of 600 daily. I have joined a guild. I play for fun when I can, and I am filling this thing out as a favor to a friend. Um, <laughs> so uh, there are 27% of you that are just good Samaritans who filled this out for your friend. Uh, 21% that are thinking about starting their second alt. And... Uh, the uh, hitting the guild's quota of 600 daily is 47% of people. So uh, that pretty much covers everyone. There is no one that just plays for fun when they can that did this poll. That's not surprising at all. No. those pe The people that would put that one will probably check Discord like two days from now and see the poll and fill it out then. So if we come back two days ago and look at the poll, there might be a green sliver there at that nice. point. <laughs> That's possible. Totally possible. So who knows? All right. So what's the next question? Next question is football related because, you know, we can't get enough sports on this podcast, even though no one wants to hear it. So That's true. who do you want to win the Super Bowl? And, 25% of people said the Patriots, which would make you think that a lot of people said the Rams, but only 17% of people said the Rams. The majority of people said not Tom Brady at 57%. <laughs> so a lot of people just are that... tired of seeing Tom Brady be the best quarterback the NFL has ever seen. Yeah. That, so, and that's understandable. I can't blame them, but enjoy it while it lasts because it's only going to last probably another five years. So, yeah, yeah. If it lasts five years, I'll be surprised. But even <laughs> even like if it's like three more years, here's the thing: some of the better, the best quarterbacks that are left out there right now, the old batch, I should say, are getting ready to be yeah. gone. Like, sorry, I'm going into football again, but I'm gonna miss Drew Brees. I'm gonna miss watching Drew Brees. I really wanted to see him versus Tom Brady mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl. But I guess what it's whatever. Yep. So last question. I'm not really, I'm not going to read off all the answers to what the question was, but I will say this, that a lot of you are, a lot of people that like to fill out polls are male listeners. So. <laughs> yes, there is a very small portion of female listeners to say the least. Um, <laughs> Less than a percentage Based. pulled out the poll. <laughs> yes. Um, and that, you know, uh, YouTube, they have their own little demographics based on, uh, you know, people that watch your videos and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty decidedly one way, which I do not find surprising. Um, we need to get another poll, just general podcast poll and get you guys input and, have you guys answer some questions uh, maybe in the next month or so. That's something we'll get around to doing. And because uh, I like doing that poll every now and then. It's good to know what our demographic is and whether we should start releasing on vinyl. So, Ooh, Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You ready for this next topic? The main topic? I, I, I hope that the intro to this is ready. All right. All right. Oh. Back on topic. We're talking about Roadhead. Or road Ahead. Sorry. We're talking about Roadhead, really? Roadhead. <laughs> I love that Finally sounders. made the, uh, yeah, finally made the Road Ahead sounder. So oh. there we go. The honking at the end is the best part. Because I just picture me in behind a bus, like in, in the driving a bus and you and like hanging over the front seat. And I'm like, <laughs> let's go. All right. Anyways, uh, nice. the road ahead. Glad you guys like that. <laughs> the road ahead is here. 
this wasn't in the run but I wanted to mention it because we didn't really talk about um, updates. But the Revan event is going on right now. Started on midnight of the 31st, and it is going on. And I wanted to talk about it just for this reason. They identified that over 500 people had this bug. Because that's crazy. This many people signed on to do the Revan event. Jeez, it's like I want to burp, but it's just air coming out. Oh, that hurts. Okay. Anyways, 500 plus people got screwed out of their last shards for Revan. So basically, they did the Terran Tack Tier 7. And once it ended, the screen went blank and the thing closed. They opened up the game again and the event was gone and they didn't have their shards. Can you just imagine... If you had waited this long to get Revan and then you missed out on the shards and you didn't have any idea if you were going to get them, when you were going to get them, or anything. I I would probably be a little annoyed. I given am, how long people have been waiting on oh Revan. Oh man, I would be so oh. pissed. And the funny thing <laughs> is, right, it's not like we're getting reports of a few players doing this. 500 plus yeah. people had this happen to them that played the event after, that is, right after midnight. 500. That's and then they, insane. Supposedly, there was a fix that was sent out. They sent out the shards and the rewards for tier 7 today. But that's 40 plus hours without being able to play their new toy. That's, that's just God. painful. It, it's it's that's, hurtful. Kevrock in chat. How many That's phones crazy. got thrown? Well, however many got thrown probably still don't have their Revan then. Unless they're playing on a different device. Pretty freaking yeah, crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> I like uh, that soul. Shirt, new shirt idea. GNP driving the SO Alliance bus. <laughs> Let's go. I mean... <laughs> not a bad idea not a bad idea it's let's be funny. honest um all right so yeah that sucks for all the revenue people hopefully they get that sorted out um you know and all that good stuff so of course in the road ahead uh, kind of talked about some of the things that have been going on recently, you know, towards the end of last year where we've got the Grand Arena, C-3PO, Hans Falcon, uh, kind of some really big stuff right there that hits at the end of the year. And Kerry mentioned that there is a very audacious five-year vision for this game. Uh, whether it will play out the whole five years, I guess we'll see, but that is pretty cool to know that, you know, that we may be able do this podcast that long because i don't know i'd be sad not doing the podcast just saying oh me too but here's the funny thing right so like three years seems like a lot for the game and we have already hit that mark five that's more true. years i mean that's two more years on top of that and we'd be doing this podcast for <laughs> a decade this game is uh, this game is wow. lasting as far as mobile games go this is lasting a good amount of time and to think they've already got three years there they have an audacious which is a perfect adjective for the uh, five-year plan in a mobile game the fact that they have that plan that they're working on and going into is is pretty exciting at least as far as the future of this game goes because as time goes on, free to play or not, if you have put money into this game, having that money still be worthwhile to you for as long as possible is is just great news overall. And to think if you put, you know, hundreds of dollars into this game or thirty, fifty dollars into this game or zero, whatever, it's nice to know that you'll all the time you spend in the game is is going to be around for a long time. So I'm pretty excited about that. But yep, totally agree. They also uh, said they also said they mentioned you. they were looking back. So you, oh, I thought you took off your headphones. I'm like, man, I really made him mad. <laughs> <laughs> mentioned looking back over the past year to take away what worked and what didn't when planning the next year. So that's kind of cool. That the, I'm sure that they've always done this, but it's nice to hear them come out and say, you know. With all the marquees that came out last year and the way they release characters and everything, they 
took everyone's feedback from the forums and Reddit and everywhere. They've seen feedback about what went on last year, and they're letting it mold what is uh, what's happening this year, basically by continuing to work on balance of marquees, reworks, achievement characters, which they said that they would mention later on, and legendaries slash heroes journey slash ancient journeys. Someone pointing this out. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, someone pointing this out, and it could very well just be the fact that they put an S on there, but Heroic Journeys, Heroic Journey doesn't have an S on it. So they had to be thinking S's when they were writing this and forgot one on Heroic Journey, but Ancient Journeys wound up with an S on it. So I'm just saying, Mm -hmm. is there another Ancient Journey coming? Because that would be the only way to make it in Ancient Journeys. So I sure hope so. I sure hope so. But yeah, they talked about finessing the delivery system of new characters and there's a good chunk of stuff in here that I'm really excited about. So why don't you let us in on what's going on there? So the new delivery system that they're talking about. So the they're talking about Emperor's Emperor Palpatine, his command shuttle is gonna be coming to the game in a new event called Galactic Chase. Uh this will take place on the Cantina Hollow Tables. It'll be released to specific nodes in the cantina. And uh, it'll allow you to earn shards of the ship while also getting other resources and other activities and things that you're kind of already doing anyway on those nodes. Uh, It doesn't require separate energy or anything like that. And they said that they will be introducing more achievement-based characters this year which is really awesome. Uh, I, I, that is something I would like to see more of because, you know, there's not very many characters that are, especially like individual achievement characters. Um, <laughs> Male Baca. Any new I, Kylo I and say- Ray? Kylo Ray unshirt. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. pretty great. They mentioned uh, ideas for this uh, uh, more achievement based characters and gave two examples. For one being actual achievement rewards, which makes me think of Vader. Remember when you started this game, there was no other way to get Vader but through achievements? Yes. If they made an achievement character, they would have to add a crap ton of achievements to make that happen because. Most people, Maybe. most people have the achievements, and there's not a lot left that me I'm working on. I'm, I'm probably not a lot that you're working on left. So, if they're adding an achievement character, it would have to be an achievement chain of doing this and then reaching a certain number, then reaching another well, certain number and getting charged. But it, the way the achievements are in game right now, if they added a character for that, they would have to add new achievements. Like a what about quests? I mean, Quest is the perfect delivery system for achievement-based characters. It is. You have these various tiers of pretty difficult things to do for the most part. I mean, it's pretty easy to adjust how long it takes and things like that. I wouldn't be surprised to see a, let's say, um, I don't know, who's... I'm trying to think of a random character. Let's say um, Endor Leia. Uh, you get Endor Leia from the Endor Leia quest. And in that quest, there are seven tiers, and each tier, say, gives you enough shards to do one star level. And you have to do various things in the game to do that. Um, I mean, that would be a great way to release a character that you know kind of motivates do? people to <laughs> try and do certain things. It would really motivate people to actually do quests. Like there are some quests that are worth that doing too. now because of the cool, ni- but those are all the new ones. All the original quests that came out, no one really cared about because it was just so much work to get them done with very little reward besides a title that covered up your guild name back in the day, back in the day, eight months ago, whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> it was really getting titles for quests just didn't seem exciting. But now you can get gear 12 pieces. Now you can get cool titles like, hello there or 
scruffy nerf herder, the, the, you know, the cool ones, and your guild name still shows, and then you get pictures or your profile pictures. Like, I've just been using my Wicket forever. I love that thing. So, I mean, have, adding another layer to quests, not achievements, but quests with ship with characters would be really cool, I think. And then the other one they mentioned was uh, currency shops. And the examples they gave were Wampa and Hermit Yoda. So the only currency shop they mentioned was the Guild Event currency shop. But don't rule out all the other ones. First off, they might refresh all those. I don't know that they'd add new characters in there. But some of the ones a lot of people don't have, they might flip out. But as far as new characters, they might put some in the Grant, uh, Guild Event store, which would be awesome. Um yeah. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see them add some sort of odd character, uh, you know, to that. Um, it would make sense. And storing up some of that currency just for that might not be a bad idea. I'm going to consider doing that, actually. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, I want to go back because we kind of glazed over Galactic Chase. A lot of people were thinking this is a Cantina node thing. But I want to point out the fact that it says contain, can, Cantina Holotables. Now, as far yes. as if you're on that main screen, that whole thing is called the Cantina. And yes. every little table on there is the is a holotable. So it's not, yep. as far as I read it, it's not Cantina nodes. It's all the tables across the game. Now, yes. when like I read one this... Day... Sorry, go ahead. I think you're going to say what I was going to say. I was going to say, when I first read this, I thought that, like, if it was a weekly thing or maybe, like, every three days it changed type thing, I thought it was going to be something like, all right, for these seven days or these three days, when you are farming cantina battles, you have a chance to get um, uh, this shuttle shards. And then it'll switch. The chase will be on, and it'll move to you know, mod salvage. And if you are farming mod salvage now for a few days, you have yep. a chance to get the shards and then it'll just keep moving around. That's what I read it as. The only thing that yep. throws me off on that is the fact that it says release to specific nodes there. And I got to wonder if it meant specific nodes in side of each of those hollow tables or specific nodes, meaning a specific hollow table, a specific hollow tables nodes. So I'm really hoping that I it's... assume it'll be specific nodes, not a specific hollow table. So it'll be like, you know, for the next, you know, for these three days, if you want to get shuttle shards, you're going to have to give up your farming of, you know, Bobo or Kylo or whatever in, say, the Cantina uh, thing. And then you'll have to go farm that. And then it maybe goes to Dark Side and you'll have to quit farming Bastila Sean or give up some energy that you're spending somewhere else to go farm it. That's kind of what I expect we'll see. That actually kind of makes sense. Um, it would make too much, it would be too easy for it just to be part of your daily uh <laughs> You daily think this going to be easy? That's but the funny. funny thing is it says, does not require a separate energy grind. And to me, pulling my yep. energy off my other grinds to energy grind this ship is a separate grind because I'm pulling it off of well, something else. So no, but there's not a separate energy for it. I mean, it's going to be using a mod cantina ship or regular energy to do it. Yeah, we shall so. see. It'll be. An I'm really excited to see what this event actually is because if it's yep, just me too. if it's if it's what I described, I'd be really excited about it. If I have to pull off of something to farm it over days, that would be annoying. But I, I can see how it would be. It's interesting and it's new, and I'm I'm excited to see what it is. So I think it's cool they're doing that for sure. And that they are also thinking about other ways to release new characters. So. Um. All right. So the next kind of big topic here is going to be quality of life updates. There are a few of these that are absolutely awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd say so. All right. So, uh, Raid Simming. Uh, this is going to be for 
the heroic rancor raid only and the idea will be once a guild has a certain number of seven star han solos and beaten it a certain number of times etc once you meet these conditions you will be able to auto the raid and all members will receive equal rewards uh, those rewards are still being tuned, but, you know, hopefully this will be the thing that actually ups those rewards and makes them better. It would be great to get, you know, say even if they made it like 35 salvage um, with chance for full and spread that across the board, that would be great. I think on average there will be an uptick. Uh, just because if you're at that point, you know, you're kind of in game. And I kind of think that that's something that they may do to, um, you know, because they tend to do those type of things every now and then. What do you think? I think I was responding to chat and missed the main point you were made there. Well, that's fine. Uh, the <laughs> other thing is you will still be able to open the Rancor and raid normally if you don't want a sim, but that will be an option. Uh, so you, you were talking and... about raid rewards. Um, I'll just make my point and you tell me if it aligns with yours. I am hoping that if you're simming it, you are now simming somewhere in the range of the top 10 rewards, if not the number one rewards, because... If you're assuming for the entire guild at at rank 10 rewards, then you might as well you might as well just run it normally. You know what I mean? Like it needs to be worth simming over running it normal. So hopefully the, um, yeah. the percentage chance for full pieces is is pretty good so that if everyone's getting the same piece and equal rewards, you all have a good chance of getting something good and not you know not punishing people that would be in the top 10 every time or what no i i think they will punish people that are in the top 10 every time but i think that the boost for everyone else will be significant enough that it's not going to matter yeah it'll be interesting i i i'm i'm also interested to see if um I hope it's better than how, that. How it I mean, will I, work. I really do. Be, it, will it have a... That was weird. Okay. Well, um, Eldor, thanks for the raid. Appreciate it. I, I just hope that... Uh, I don't understand. If we sim the raid, is it going to automatically register everyone, all 50 people, and do it immediately? Or do you have to run a registration period and at the end of that registration period, it sims? Because in my head, if you're going to sim the rate, I would think that you would want all 50 people in it at the time it sims and just be done with it. So I'm hoping that it's just it gets rid of this need to register or join a raid but i mean they added the join button instead of just auto join so i assume that it's going to need a registration period and then it will sim so we'll see um yeah i don't know but next up is something yes it sims for the guild well i mean i know it sims for the guild i'm curious if it sims for all 50 people or it sims at the end of a join period and the 35 people that joined get the sim and 15 people that might have missed it or forgot to do it thinking they did don't get rewards you know what i'm saying if that makes sense I don't, I, i'm just curious which one it is because if all 50 people get them you don't have to set a join period you'll be like all right tomorrow at noon i'm gonna sim the raid and by one everyone should have their rewards so, yeah, I'm with you, Zane. I think it's probably more along the join period thing, which still kind of stinks, but you don't want to be down on things because this is cool because it means I don't have to run it. So as long as I hit join, I'm going to get the same as everyone else. So that's cool. It's just, it would be nice if it, it, it's the same complaint I had when they added the join button. I think it's just, just be auto sim for everyone. Auto sim for everyone that provided raid tickets, you know? Everyone provided the raid tickets with their energy. 
why should they not get the rewards? I don't know. But yeah. All right, squad management. This is something that I've harped on so many times. You have to to get to squad management, you have to go to join a battle and then you can get to the squad management screen. So you have to have energy to do a battle to get to the squad management screen. There was no other place in the game to get to the squad management screen except doing that. So if you had no energy, you were screwed, which seems really dumb. But apparently they agree because now if you are go to the character inventory screen, they are now putting a button in there for squad management. So thank you. Finally, this is what I've always wanted. I've completely complained about this several times give me a way to get to the the squad builder screen that doesn't involve energy spend so now you're going to have it right on the character screen but not only that it's going to be more awesome than it is now because now you select characters it's going to put their name on there which is great for clones and jawas and all those people that you just sometimes mm -hmm. can't tell their pictures apart it'll have their name on there it will also when they're sitting on the right side of the screen on the character select screen it will also show their gear level so you'll know what gear level they are because a lot of times i wonder when they're sitting there what gear level people are um also they will have also now have a shared indicator so if a character you're adding to a squad is also involved in another squad on that same tab inside the squad uh management tool it'll tell you and put an indicator there saying hey this person is part of another squad or another two squads I love or this. whatever so it's going to make setting up your teams for like grand arena and territory war so much easier yeah you make your 3v3 tab you set it all up and you notice that uh hey there's a shared indicator on this person i need to pick yep. a different person there so it, it's a really cool thing that they've added to there now the last tidbit they added onto that makes me wonder, well, what did you do there? Because the last thing they said was similar functionality added to the mod loadout management as well. What? Okay, so shared mods for different loadouts on different tabs? That's one thing I, don't I can know think if that's... of. But what what else? I, um, I don't know if that is talking about... Uh... Or I assume that's talking about making it easier to get to your mod loadouts and adjust those um, and be able to set up, you know, like mod mod folders, folders of mods to where you're not reusing the same mod. It'll be interesting once if they release the patch sense. notes to see how much of yeah that is true and what it actually they actually changed in the mod ones because that was a very small blurb for a very big thing for some people you know so yeah um and as mentioned in the live stream one thing that hopefully we see is ship loadouts as well and one other squad management thing that i saw crumb posts about in reddit is you will be able to sort by leader ability so you you like, if you want somebody with the leader ability specifically, you'll be able to sort by those. Um, that is one thing I am super excited about because there have been a lot of times where it's like, I just, I want to look at leader abilities and that's it. Find someone who fits with the rest of what I've got. And uh, that is going to be absolutely awesome as well. Yep, I totally agree. Um, this next the other one is thing, just kind of weird to me. Oh, the other thing. Uh, yeah, Sorry, it's... before you go into that. What? No, go ahead. That's what I was going to. Uh, the buff debuff minimizer. So, as you may know, with more Ravens running around, this is an even bigger issue than it's ever been before. But it's got a new button added to the screen to toggle buffs on and off. With it off, a few key buffs taunt, foresight, and uniques will still be visible. Lower priority buffs will fall off as higher ones are added to a character. Uh, arrows with numbers to show how many buffs or debuffs are hidden. And new buffs 
flash briefly before hiding away. So this will be great for Jedi that have basically all these offense buffs. You don't particularly care about them. You just want to know that they have them or whether they're active or not. But, you know, there are things that are more key decision-making things. For example, taunt, foresight, uh, you know, things like that. So uh, I think this will be a really, really nice change. Well, it's kind of funny. Imagine if um, imagine if buffs weren't collapsible like they used to not be. And then imagine Revan with that setup. The whole screen would be covered. Like, imagine the yep. the Vader dot life without any of this stuff. So, oh my God, I know. <laughs> I remember. I still remember great pictures of Zader uh, Rancor solos where the the Rancor just has like four lines of dots above his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, freaking crazy. Pretty classic. But yeah, this is a good thing. Uh, it'll. I don't even know if I'm going to use it, to be honest. I don't have a hard time um, seeing through this stuff. The only time I might use it is I would, might toggle it on and off to make sure someone I'm attacking doesn't have foresight yep. um, or who has taunt at the moment. Those are the only two reasons I might toggle it on. But I'm probably going to leave this off at all times. That's just the way... It's never really bugged me, but I know this is a big want for a lot of people. So it's good that they are filling this need for a good chunk of the community. Yeah. It's not not just not something that ever bugged me. And once they I, added the the number underneath a, a one that could have multiples, I didn't really ever have a big problem with it. Now Revan does do a lot of buffs, but yeah. I don't think I've ever had a problem targeting through that. But I will use it to pull them away to see certain buffs. And then probably turn it back on. Because I like to be know nice. when I have offense up. I like to know when I have this and that. You know, I don't want to click on the character. I don't know. But it is really, really cool change. So uh, really nice for all. Really nice that they're implementing this soon after Revan is going to be running crazy until the next meta. So, yeah. Indeed. Cool. Uh, next thing, uh, Grand Arena matchmaking. They're going to make it where ship galactic power will not count matchmaking for Grand Arenas in which no ship nodes are available. So that is going to be a pleasant change for a lot of people. Um, some people might hate it, but I think for the most part, people are going to be quite happy about that. Um, and then there will be some other quality of life stuff that'll that you'll see in the patch notes, but this is the big, big stuff that they revealed directly in the road ahead post. And for that last bit, think of things like um, bronziums are now at the front of the store. That's yeah, the type exactly. of small stuff that they don't write in here that you're like, oh my god, I love this. Because I can tell you this yes. much: having the bronziums at the front is a godsend. I don't think I've scrolled to it that is. other end of the bronziums in like since that happened. So yep. it's pretty great. That is true. So the other thing is new content. There is going to be some new content coming up. You know, um, it's going to have a theme, separatist droids, nothing, nothing too exciting here, really. <laughs> it's, it's, it's exciting, but it's not exciting to me at the same time, only because my separatist droids. Oh, suck. I was being sarcastic. I know you were. I know fair. you are, but I, 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 I want to be excited for it. But then I think, man, I have so much gear to put on these dudes, and if they're amazing, I'm gonna feel so left out. So, uh, all right. So there will be a marquee event for the B1 battle droid. Uh, these are the the little things that you see in you know like Phantom Menace episode one uh those, those little droids that jar jar loves beating up and getting tripped on and such uh they appear as a single unit but whose abilities reflect the persuasiveness of the seemingly unending units behind it so what does that make you think of make zombie like zombie or the uh Maybe just a buff on himself that's similar to the Imperial Trooper buff in Territory Wars. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, yeah. there's something on this dude is going to make it it seem like he's just this unending armor uh, army of B1 battle droids. Yep. So so that will be really cool. Cannot wait to see that. Uh but more excitingly than anything, because I think they've done a few polls in which they ask characters that we would like to see. And we've done a few things like this on the show. And every time we do this, this is my answer. Droideka! <laughs> and if you don't, that is the little roly-poly droid with the shield that is, you know, in the opening scene of episode one. I'm pretty pumped. That's going to be awesome. If you go and look at the road ahead post, the I do believe the Droideka is sitting there next to Grievous in the rework picture they made. Yeah, he's standing. He's literally standing right there next to him, looking like a badass. It's pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's going to be freaking cool. I cannot wait for that. That is going to be fantastic. Yeah, it's, um, it's... And the funny thing is they didn't mention how he's getting released. Maybe they don't know true. yet. Maybe it's a new, maybe he's the Grand Guild event token character they're thinking of, which would be freaking yep. fantastic. <laughs> but B1 is Indeed. specifically mentioned as a marquee event. Droideka, hey, he's coming, but we're not going to say anything about how you get him. Hey, you want to throw him in for Grand uh, uh, Guild event currency? I'm all for that. But he is a really cool character. Really excited to see him. And you know what's funny is B1 is like one of the most basic units there is. But I've wanted that. I w I've wanted B1 in the yeah. game for so long just because it's They're cool. it's such an iconic uh prequel and Clone Wars cartoon character. Absolutely. So yep, for sure. I'm all about it. Um so let's see. Also reworks. Uh Hello, also, Zylo, here. Zylo Takedown. I don't want to hear the term paper B1. <laughs> Neither do <laughs> I, friend. Neither do I. No kidding. No kidding there. Um, so I think they learned the lesson there, hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, so it also looks like Magna Guard and B2 will be getting reworks as well, which is really cool. B2 is already a pretty good character. Uh, you know, that AoE Dispel and the Turn Meter, he, he can actually be pretty good, useful in Grand Arena for sure. And then Magna Guard sucks always as, but maybe finally will be competent and decent at something. But more importantly, it's the rework everyone's been waiting for. Um, you know... Arnold found out about this last year, apparently. Uh, the rest of us just found out here recently. However, Gerald Grievous is getting a rework. This is very exciting stuff. Did some? Did people actually want that? Uh, apparently. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Let me just say this. Within the first year and a half of this game, literally the hardest character to get. It costs so much shard shop currency. You had to have so many shards to farm this dude. It took forever to get him. And when the people that got him, even un just unlocked, so unimpressive. And they just kept going to get oh. him to seven star, thinking maybe the stars would do it. It's just, he's just been bad forever. One of the hardest characters to get ever in this game. Finally getting a rework. One of the better. One of the more cool characters in the movies and the Clone Wars uh, cartoon. Never been given the due justice that he deserves just because of how cool the character is. Super excited that he's getting a rework. Not as excited if his rework involves only Separatist droids because I really wanted all droids to get uh, um, brought up. Yeah. But yeah, I'm pretty so excited that for this General Grievous thing because I do have... Everyone but Droideka and B1 at seven stars, which means I do have the team around him of the characters that are released seven star. I just have to gear them. So I'm there, kind of. So it, it, it'll work out all right, I think. But I'm pretty excited that such an awesome, always been hard to get character is now finally getting a rework. 
Yep. And, uh, I mean, with him being as major of a character as he is in Star Wars, I mean, he's not like the biggest character, but he's kind of important. So, uh, yeah, it'll be nice to actually get him that rework that he deserves. We will see. All right, so one last thing from the road ahead. That was all the content, but she just, Carrie just had to add one last thing on to the end that maybe no one else saw or really thought about, but the fact that the, at the end of her sign-off, this is what she said. And that's all for now. There will be more information, as always, in the coming weeks if you hop on over to the official forums. Then this line, this one, the one that throws everything in a tizzy, makes you wonder if you should gear the Separatist droids, whether you should continue farming hard after Old Republic, and that is, you hear that, meat bags? I will be back. So, Wink's not here at the moment, because he had to go and do something, but for everyone in chat, every, you guys know who loves to say meat bags, correct? HK47. That's his That's his thing, right? HK-47 is an Old Republic character, one that doesn't have the Old Republic tag. There are four Old Republic characters, new ones that weren't required for Jedi Knight Revan, that are in the game that a lot of people have thought are for a Darth Revan. Mentioning meat bags makes me think HK-47 is going to get an Old Republic tag or be used for something, and then you still need those four people. And then to me, this is my brain thinking, this rework is a, hey, look at the new shiny, go gear it up, and then within a few weeks, we're going to release information about another ancient journey. And that is why I will be staying the course on my Old Republic characters for that reason only, be just because she wrote meat bags in the end of this stinking road ahead. If that was not in there, I might have slowed down. The fact that that is in there, it makes me think, hey, maybe that is still a thing. It didn't happen in February, but maybe uh, they're giving us a little more time to farm these characters. And we'll see that in uh, the beginning of March. So I myself, well, not too worried about General Grievous and the Separatist Choice, as awesome as they probably will be. I will still be going hard shard wise after those old republic characters only because she well decided two to throw of them aren't even farmable yet. but they should be farmable within a week a week and a half so next week yes. we should probably see them become farmable that is true i don't know man this is just it's crazy it's crazy i agree craziness so much stuff going on um but that pretty much takes it takes us to the end of uh, end of our notes. Other than uh, one final thing. Oh, one final great thing. Man, mm. this light. You ready? Killing me. I'll be ready in two seconds. I have to take off that beanie, make my head sweat. All right, I'm gonna play our thing. Play the thing. It's time for the sexy bearded duo to battle in their swoga knowledge in the most exciting trivia event in the Outer Rim. It's time for the Shattered Order Trivia. May the Force be with you. Would you look at that? I didn't update OBS and it looks like wow. a gigantic mess. All right, so everyone on the live stream is going to see the behind the scenes work here because I am fixing this right now all right so you see, <laughs> it looks great just cut this out of the, the audio version i can't because there's music make it too difficult too difficult too hard all right or i'm too lazy it's one of those all right i got it back we're good didn't take me long all right so all right so here we go chat order trivia this week i am not playing i will be your pat sajak is a pat sajak from jeopardy 
That's a name. I, I said know. it. So there you go. Shadow Road Trivia. I will be asking the question. Will of Fortune. He's Will of Fortune? Who's the dude yes. from uh, Jeopardy? Uh, Alex Trebek. Suck it, Trebek. Alex Trebek. All right. So anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I will be playing the part of Pat Sajak slash Alex Trebek. Wink will be answering the questions because the amount of questions he gets right from this will determine what he Zetas for his second Zeta. So as exciting as that sounds, mm -hmm. this, be, this is... This feels like this is your life. All right, so All move right. On. we'll move on to the next page, and we'll see how this is going to work. <clears throat> Since Wink lost his wager, he gets two Zetas. One will be decided by the community, a.k.a. Rose. The other will be decided by none other than himself. This trivia is just for Wink. The Zeta he will get have to get from this trivia will be based on the number of questions he gets right. If you get zero right, please don't get zero right. You will have to Zeta Bodhi Rook. Okay. One, one right, you have to Zeta Veteran Han. Or, as he said, you could choose one of the lower ones depending on how many you get right. So if you get one right, okay. you can choose Veteran Han or Bodhi. I gotcha. I gotcha. Two right adds Farm Boy Luke. Three right adds Stormtrooper. Not Stormtrooper Han, Stormtrooper. Four is Holdo. Five is Greedo. So if you get five questions right, which is I think is all of them, you get to pick whatever Zeta you want. But All right. Yeah. Let's see how this disaster goes. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. I I am excited. Alright, so I I'm gonna take out my phone and I'm gonna give you two minutes to answer these questions. Okay. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. So, timer, two minutes. All right, the timer's set. I will start it once I've asked you the question. Here you go. Question one. Name six tanks whose kit do not contain the word taunt. If you, lose, if you list seven and one is incorrect, that will count as five. So if you may list six correctly. Eight correct or one incorrect and one incorrect or ten correct and two incorrect, etc. On your mark, get set. Uh, hold on. So hold on. their kit, their kits do not contain the word taunt. Yes. And in three, two, one, your two minutes has started. So for everyone out there, while Wink answers this question, I want to put this out there, but if you have any feedback, any at all, anything you want to say to us, the shattered order at gmail.com is our email, and we check that all the time. We get back to anyone that messages us, messages us there, and we talk about what you wanted to talk about, feedback you have, or you can join our Discord at shattered discord.me slash shattered order so those are the two places you can find us most often to give your feedback and let us know what you like what you don't like about the podcast what you want more of what you want less of just do that for us and we would appreciate it so how is it going over there wink terrible i got one you've got one yes oh boy, oh boy. you want to tell me who that one is mace Mace, gotcha. All right. I I know that one for a fact. Right. Um. Hmm. Well, you need six, so we've got a little work to do in the next forty-five seconds. And this, okay. So, oh, interesting. Marisu. You have no idea what you just call. Unfortunate. Yeah. yeah Twelve that's... seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's we're gonna quit wasting time. That's <laughs> I get that one wrong. Uh, there's no way. What, what are answers they? What answers did you have? That was it, Mace. RJT, man. Okay. 
Uh, Tebow? Is that another one? Fives? Yeah, so I've got fives. All right. B2, fives, Finn, Gar Saxon, Zeb Aurelios, IG100, Jedi Knight Guardian, Mace, Mob Enforcer, apparently, Plo, Tebow, Vandor. Uh, Finn. Finn has taunt in his kit. Does he? Yes. All right, we're going. We're going in game. I'm pretty sure. I know he taunts, but is it in his kit? Uh, somebody in chat said it's in Poe's kit. I could have swore that was in Finn's kit. Yeah, I don't see it in his kit. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, if what's the Finn... next question? Whenever Poe loses taunt, Finn gains taunt for one turn. That is stand firm from uh, Poe Hammerin. Okay. All right. I knew that's one. how it worked. I was thinking that was in his, though. Okay. All right, here we go. Next one. Hold on. I forgot to bring up my thingy thing. All right. Which of these has a Zeta that does... Do, sorry. Which of these has a Zeta that does something only once throughout an entire match? Young Han, Bastila Fallen, Mission, Vow, or Night Sister Spirit? Your two minutes starts now. What else can I plug in two minutes? Um, if you are listening to this on the audio podcast, we do a live stream every, almost every Friday. Sometimes it's a different day, but we'll say in Discord. But uh, twitch.tv slash shattered or come join the live stream. It's a lot of fun. We got a lot of people in here today and reading through this chat. You guys have awesome comments. Really fun to hang out with you guys. So it'd be really cool to get even more of you guys in here for the live stream. Um, it's just a lot of fun. So twitch.tv slash shattered order. Come check it out. It'd be awesome. All right, dude, you got um, another minute. You think you got your answer or should I give you a little more time? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Bastila Fallen. All right. Link has gone. With Bastila Fallen. The correct answer is Bastila Fallen Zeta gives herself and the leader foresight to start the match. Hey, -o. now did, be honest, did you guess? No. I <laughs> I knew it wasn't Young Han or Mission and Night Sister Spirit. I couldn't remember what hers was, but um, I knew Bastila's. Uh, I knew it was something to do directly with the... The beginning of the match. Know, yeah. Gotcha. And okay. that it was kind of worthless for the most part, so... All right, Wink, you're one for two. So you got a few... You've got two options for Zetas now. So let's see if we can get you a third option. Question number three. Okay. Which terrible character has this unique? Wall below 50% health... X has plus 30% tenacity and recovers 15% health at the beginning of each of their turns. And go. For all of you listening, I'll plug more stuff. Our Twitter is twitter.com slash shattered order. Big surprise, it's shattered order. But go check that out. We, plug, we put things out there all the time on there. Uh, like last week, Wink was trying to decide who he wanted to gear, so he put up a, pod, or a Twitter poll question asking people what they thought people did it and uh, helped him to decide what he was going to gear last week so if you're interested in that kind of thing twitter.com slash shattered order um for anyone that's interested in supporting this show patreon.com slash shattered order is where you can go and uh, help support this awesome show and make sure that we are able to put out the great content that we do for you guys all right, so you think you have the answer. 
How much time do I have? You have a minute left. Here we go. 45 seconds. At some point, someone's be Joker's best tank in chat was JKG. That must have been a very dark time in your Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes life. I don't think I unlocked her until I had almost all characters at seven stars. I'm going to go with Mob Enforcer. All right. He has chosen Mod Enforcer, Mob Enforcer with 15 seconds left. What is the correct answer? We're going to find out. It's, it's nice that he gave you over 150 characters to choose from. It gives you a pretty good chance of getting it right. That's true. <laughs> Jedi Knight Guardian was the correct answer. Uh, I was... I consider that one. Hmm. What is the next question? I will say this. You did choose the worst character in the game. So that's a good way to go, in my opinion. Yeah, I was thinking him and Cup had so some sort of similar kits. And I remember Cup had gets like 30% potency. Um... And I knew Guardian had something about getting below health. I, I did not recall that uh, she had a heal, though. I used to use her in Arena. <laughs> Tesh got mad at me because I said someone had Jedi Knight Guardian as their worst tank. And you still didn't choose it. Nice. <laughs> all right. What's next question? All right. All right. Sorry. Question nine. Or not nine. Sorry, question four, you're one for two, one for three. Okay, here we go. What terrible character reduces enemies' crit chance and crit damage for their leadership ability? Oh. Uh. <laughs> General Grievous. That's your answer? Yes. All right. His answer is General Grievous. The correct answer is General Grievous. All right. Two for four, Wink. Two for four. That gives you three options for Zetas. Okay. All right. So we're down to the last question. Last question is, one of these atrocious characters can call a target ally to assist. Another has an AoE debuff. Another can gain additional crit chance damage in a unique. And another that does none of those. Match them up. You want me to read it again? Uh, no, I'm going to try to pull it. All right, so here are the char four characters. Write these live up. Stream. It's very difficult. Just write these four names down, no, and then uh, I'll okay. write the four I got, things. I, I've, I've, got, I've got it up. Okay, cool. There you go. Big deal, do you see me waving in the top of Wink's screen now? <laughs> i got to get this dude in here today. Just because. I'm not sure I know what any of these characters do. This is my boy. His name is Wampa. I've never met him before. He's probably the coolest Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes character there is. And uh, I don't think Mike is watching this right now. But my good friend Mike got me this. And it is amazing. One of those old 80s toys. I mean, his foot is just gone. Good old Wampa. And Wampa has hit the ground. Poor dude. All right, your two minutes are coming close to the end. You have 30 seconds. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> um. Hmm. All right, ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, do you have answers? I'm gonna go with the assist on Bodhi, the debuff on Eve, the nun on Cup, and uh, whatever the other one is, a mob. Okay. Eth, so you said Cup for. Or Bodhi for assist? Is that what you said? Yes. Bodhi assist, Koth, debuff, Cup nothing, Mob Enforcer unique. Alright, so Cup has the AoE debuff. Eth Koth has the unique increasing CC cooldown versus droids. Okay. Bodhi Rook has target uh, ally uh -huh. assist. And Mob Enforcer has none. So you got half of those, right? Uh. By the way, I yes. take offense. My gear tin ETH Koth is awesome, so y'all need to stop. It used to be mediocre. <laughs> I remember when I was so excited. He's gear tin only because I used him to unlock uh, Yoda when Yoda first came out. But I remember being super stoked he was gear tin when the the tank was coming out because I'm like, oh, he's great against droids. This he's gonna clean up house. That yeah. did not happen. <laughs> All right. Well, um, All right, I think so that does it, right? Let me go back. All right. No, I don't have to go back. It's the next slide. Let's see it, Wink. Right, are you gonna choose now, or are you gonna let us know in podcast chat? Uh, yeah, we'll talk about it next week. Your choices are. Just to recap, Farm Boy Luke, Veteran Han, or Bodhi Rook. Perfect. I know, I know who I would pick. Let's just say that. Well, I'll sleep on it, and we'll talk about it next week. Sounds good. That's a lot of sleeps. That's at least six sleeps. Seven sleeps. So you have seven sleeps to figure it out. Sounds good. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming and hanging out with us. It is has been fun. This was episode 134. We appreciate you guys always being here and hanging out with us. Uh, not sure what's going on next week or what's being released or any of that information, but we will have a really packed show as we always do and maybe a guest. Who knows? We'll see. But for me and Wink, I'd like to say thanks for hanging out with us. And uh, unless you have anything else, Wink. I think that's it. Other than later. Later. You've just finished with the Shattered Order podcast. Join us next week for another round. <laughs>